Hey friends, welcome back to Truth Shots. You know, as we get closer to the end of the age and the return of Jesus Christ to the second coming, I feel as a pastor, a preacher, a kingdom leader, I'm feeling the intense call, the pull of the Holy Spirit to really bring about my opportunities to warn and guide people with urgency into this season in which we are living. One of the things that I find the Holy Spirit leading me back to is Bible passages that are really calling people who profess to know Jesus Christ to inspect their foundation, to make their calling and election sure, to really know that what they said with their lips concerning what they believe is matched with their lives. And so today in this episode of Truth Shots, I want to bring you a message called Inspecting Your Foundation from a familiar passage of scripture in the book of Matthew chapter number seven. So join me in Matthew chapter seven for today's episode of Truth Shots. So just yesterday I was talking to a young man and I was talking to him about his life. This is a Christian young man. This is a young man who's pursuing the Lord and really, really wanting to live his life for the glory of the Lord. But he's also pursuing a young woman. And as he was telling me what's going on in their relationship, there wasn't any immorality or unholiness, but there was a little bit of friction in this young man's relationship because uh, he was failing to live up to his commitments to this young woman that he's pursuing. And he couldn't understand why she was making such a big deal out of it. You know, I had to talk to him for quite at length. And as I listened and I addressed what he was sharing, ultimately, this is what I said to him. I said, friend, uh, women want to know that the man that they're choosing to partner with has the strong foundation. And that strong foundation for the woman is security that is built upon trust. And I said, brother, I love you, but you are destroying the foundation you're breaking up her trust because you're failing to live up to what you say. You know, what we believe is better demonstrated by how we behave than by what we say. It's easy to say things and say that we believe them, but our actions ultimately either validate or invalidate what we say we believe. Uh, there's plenty of scripture on that, by the way. Um, I would say it this way. A faith that saves is a faith that behaves. It means this, you live out in day-to-day -day activity what you truly believe is best. There's no getting around it. We can say a lot of things, but the foundation of what we truly believe will be made visible in how we live. And so when we're looking in Matthew chapter 7, I want to read to you a few verses that will help you inspect your foundation. Is your foundation solid? Or is it like my friend that I mentioned earlier, this young man, is your foundation presumably solid, yet when the storm hits, will it stand the test of time? So look with me in Matthew chapter number 7 and verse number 24. And Jesus finishes up the Sermon on the Mount with these words. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock and everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Now, I don't know if you know about the Sermon on the Mount, but it is the most famous sermon that Jesus Christ ever preached. It has got some of the most precious and beautiful kingdom truths, and it actually lasts for three chapters in Matthew's Gospel. Matthew 5, 6, and 7 contain the Sermon on the Mount, and the words that I just read to you were the last things Jesus said on that sermon. So Jesus had been giving the people tons of kingdom truth. He's laying the foundation for their lives in order to for them to glorify God, to experience the purpose of for which they were created and birthed into the kingdom at that time. And those words have stood down through the ages, through the centuries, for nearly 2,000 years. And Jesus is saying something at the end of the message that you and I in our generation need to hear. It's not us saying amen to what Jesus preached in the Sermon on the Mount. It's us obeying what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. 
That's how the foundation for our lives is established. It's not in our amens, it's in our obedience to what he says. And so as we look at this message, it gives us all an opportunity to inspect our foundation. What does that mean? It means we need to know that there are some storms coming, and Jesus uh, speaks to those in this passage of Scripture. And it's too late to inspect your foundation for life once the storms arrive. You have to know that your house, your life, your heart, your faith is established upon truth, upon the rock upon full surrender to these things so that you can withstand the storms that are here and the storms that are coming. And so let's look at this passage of scripture and let's take a moment to inspect our foundations for life. Whether you're a Christian or a non-Christian, I want you to hear these things because this is going to be crucial the closer we get to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ because when trouble hits and tribulation breaks out and the devil goes haywire, man, That's the wrong time to be figuring out if you're ready for the storm. We do it now when things are relatively peaceful, relatively not chaotic compared to what's coming. And there's an opportunity called grace right now for you and for me to look at our lives and say, am I really a person who's living out what I say I believe? So Jesus begins by introducing two types of people. That's what we see. Jesus introduces two people. Let me give you the first one from the beginning of verse 24. The first one is a wise and a faithful person. This is the Christian living in the will of God, and this is the way he's described in Jesus's parable. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. So it's the the imagery of architecture. You're building something. It represents you living your life, you building a life, you investing in a life, you you spending your days, your hours, your time, your influence, your money, your purposes, all of that. That's what it means to, to build a life. Everybody's doing it. We may not all be doing it well, but we're all building something. So this building of the house is representative of a life. It's what you do with everything that's been given to you. And Jesus says it's a very wise and a faithful person who's building their lives upon his sayings, upon what he has said, upon the words that have come from God. He says that person is wise. And we're going to find out why that person's wise in a moment. But let me give you a breakdown. This is a person who listens to the words of Christ. He listens to what God says. He says, Jesus says, everyone who hears these words of mine. So anybody that was listening to Matthew 5, 6, and 7 when it was originally preached, he's like, you all are hearing the same thing. But here's the difference. The wise person actually believes what they're hearing. They're hearing what Jesus is saying. And by the way, let's just expand it. It's not just what Jesus said in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. It's what all of God's word said. From Genesis to Revelation, that's the word of God, the written word of God. It's God's revelation of who he is, how he is, what he promises, and what he requires. That's the word of God. And so when we hear the word of God, we are to believe the word of God. Now, notice, here's the evidence that the wise man who heard the word of God really believed it. What's the evidence? The Bible says he does them. He does what God says. He brings his life into alignment with the word of God. He's not leaning to his own understanding. He's not checking the popular opinion of his generation. He's not listening to false religions. He's not going after human philosophies. This is a man that says, hey, there's a lot of voices out there, but I know that God's word is true and I'm going to know God's word and I'm going to believe God's word. And the evidence that I truly believe it is that I obey it. Wow. That's a word for our churches in this day, because the Bible can become an empty relic. The Bible can become, you know, a bookshelf or a table decoration. The Bible in a lot of churches just isn't used anymore. The word of God and the words of Jesus have been ignored. And now you're getting whatever the preacher wants to say, whatever the guru, whatever the podcaster, whatever the the guy on TV is saying. And you're getting those opinions instead of the word of God. And guys, we've got to come back to a place where as Christians, I'm talking to Christians, that the only reason we are Christians is because we believed what the word of God said about our sin, about Jesus's sacrifice and about our salvation. 
It was the word of God that got us into the kingdom, but we never abandon the word of God when we come out of it. And so the wise man hears the word of God, believes the word of God, and shows that he believes it because he obeys it. Let me just say this boldly. If you're not walking in obedience, you actually don't believe God. You actually don't. You have an intellectual assent that what God has said might be true, but you only believe what you obey. If you don't obey it, if you don't receive it, you do not believe it. So what about the other person? Because I said there were two types of people. We've got the wise and the faithful person, but the second one is a wayward and foolish person. This is the guy that you don't want to be. This is the woman you don't want to be. It says, everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Okay, so we're back to the architecture metaphor again. Just think with me. What's more stable, a house that is anchored in rock or a house that is anchored in sand? Well, if you've ever been to the beach, you know how very little it takes to move and shift sand. We've all seen it happen. The tide comes in, it changes the whole landscape, it changes the edge, it changes the coastline. If storms come in, it radically changes it. And so sand is not what we want to build our lives upon. You don't want to build a house on it. And the illustration is you don't want to build your, your life on a faulty foundation. And Jesus says some people do that. And notice, those, there's still people that hear his words. Don't miss that. Just like the first person, the wise and the faithful person, they heard the same stuff. They heard the truth. They knew the truth. Apparently, they even said they believed the truth. But Jesus says, you actually don't believe it because you don't do what I say. Does that sound too harsh to you? Does that sound too stringent? Does that sound like God's too strict? Well, friends, let me just go ahead and burst the bubble. God is strict. He's gracious. He's merciful. He's compassionate, compassionate, but he's holy and he's serious and he requires obedience to what he says. Now, thankfully, when we fail to obey, there is the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the faithful person who stumbles. I'm talking about the person who hears the truth and says, yeah, I, 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 I know it's right because it came from God, but I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want to obey that. I got my own plans. I got other people telling me what's right. And I really don't have to listen to Jesus. After all, Christians are on the wrong side of history and this stuff's outdated and we're a more sophisticated culture and we've got philosophy and we've got doctors, we've got professors and we've got all of the voices and the sages of the world telling us what's right. We don't have to believe. Well, uh, I would say that this person listens to the word of Christ. He hears the words Jesus said that he preached. He may or may not believe. Let's just say he may believe. Now, if he believes but disobeys, he's a rebel. That's all there is to it. If you say you believe God and Jesus Christ is Lord, but you disobey him, you're a rebel. That's all there is to it. There is no wobble room there. You're a rebel if you know what is right and you disregard it. But if you don't believe it, you're not a rebel. You're just proud. Means you think you're smarter than the Lord. You think somebody else is smarter than the Lord. You don't like what Jesus says, so you found a different voice, and you're just proud. But either way, you're you're not following Him. Therefore, you disobey the will of Christ. It just simply says, because they did not believe, they disobey. So it's not real happy when you're talking about that second person. But let's get back into it and let's look at this. It's not only Jesus that he, when he when he introduces two people to it to us, he explores in the second part, two philosophies, two philosophies for living. Here's the dependable foundation for life. It's described as a wise man who built upon, built his house upon the rock. Now a rock is not outwardly impressive. A rock is a rock. It is very simple, but it's also very strong. And faith in and loyalty to Jesus Christ and his revealed truth, that is the rock. Faith in Jesus and loyalty to Jesus will result in you having your house, your life built upon the rock. That means you believe what he says because he's Jesus Christ, the son of God, the resurrected one, the one who loved you, came for you, died for you, rose for you, ascended for you, prays for you, and is coming again for you. Hallelujah. I just got excited. That is your bedrock. That is your anchor. That is your hope. You know that he has bought you. You owe everything to him. And so you have surrendered to him and you're happily, joyfully, and by faith, you're following him. Hallelujah. If that describes you, your life is built upon the rock. May, it doesn't necessarily mean everything's going your way. It doesn't mean you don't have some questions from time to time. It doesn't mean that you're not attacked by the enemy. No, all those things are going to happen to people whose lives are built on the rock. But because it's built on the rock, 
you are grounded and founded and your foundation is sure. Glory to God. I want to encourage some of you right now. Just because you're going through a hard time doesn't mean that God has abandoned you or that you've abandoned God. It simply means, as we're going to see in a minute, storms hit our lives, but you're still standing. I mean, the devil could have taken you out a long time ago if you had built on the sand. And you're, you could have given up a long time ago if you had built upon the sand. But the fact that you have anchored your heart in Jesus Christ, that's why you're continuing to go. That's your philosophy in life. You're one of those rare people that says, Jesus Christ is Lord. I, I, I give him everything. I trust him with everything. I'm growing with him as he leads me. It's not always easy, but he is my Lord and I'll never turn back on him. That's my philosophy of life. Well, hallelujah, my brother and my sister. God bless you because that's the way the Lord wants you to live. But what about the other guy? <laughs> what about not the dependable foundation for life, but what I call a deceptive foundation for life. It's pretty important we look at this too. It's described as the foolish man who built his house upon the sand. I've already alluded to that. This foundation is not like the rock. The rock is strong but simple. This one in the sand is shifting and sinking. It's, it's really describing anything that holds our confidence other than Jesus Christ, and it's revealed truth. It means we're placing our hopes in something that's not connected to God, not connected to Jesus. Now, you can go to church on Sunday, but that doesn't mean you trust Jesus. You may trust your money. You may trust your reputa reputation. You, you may be living according to what people think about you, what people say about you, what you've accomplished, what you've achieved. Or maybe you're living as a victim because things weren't fair. You weren't raised right. You weren't loved right. Things didn't go your way. Somebody stabbed you in the back and therefore you're just made up your mind. I'm going to live as a victim. Everybody owes me and I have a right to live uh, a subpar inferior life. Well, that's shifting sand too. It may, it may evoke some compassion from people because you're done wrong, but it's still not living on the rock. Because when you live on the rock, you stand. You don't sulk. You stand up and you stay in the game when you're on the when you're on the shifting sand. You're living with your trust and your identity in something other than what Jesus has said. So those are two philosophies that Jesus explores for us there. Can I pause for a moment? Dramatic pause. Take a sip of uh, my drink here and just ask you this. What philosophy is guiding you? Is your philosophy? I'm built on the solid rock. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Do you remember that old, old hymn? Are you one of those whose philosophy is, I am building my life upon Jesus Christ and what he has said, and I'm going to pursue him? Or are you putting your hope in something else? Putting your hope in the government? Man, I've been seeing a lot of Christians putting their hope in the government. Oh, the government will take care of me. No, the government's causing most of the problems. <laughs> the devil uses the government to mess up stuff. I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat. It's true, no matter who's in Washington, D.C. You're putting your hope in the government that the government's going to come through for you? You're very disappointed. That is the shiftiest sand and the sinkingest sand out there. Or maybe you're putting your hope in other people. Listen, some people even mean well and try hard, but they're still not worthy of our hope. You've got to get back to that place where you're completely sold out to Jesus Christ and whatever comes, you are remaining committed to him. So let's look at this one storm. You got two um, people, you got two philosophies, but you got one storm. Everybody experiences the same storm and it's described in verse 25 and then again in verse 27. So let's, let's look at it. It's described as the rain falling, the floods coming, the wind blowing, and the house being beat upon. So what, what do these mean, this storm? Well, first of all, I want to give you this. Storms come through events that you can't control. I see that pictured in the phrase, and the rain fell. Guys, you and I don't control the rain. The rain comes when the rain comes. The rain goes when the rain goes. Uh, this just a few weeks ago, Amy and I were down at the beach and uh, uh, we had two days of sunshine and three days of rain and there wasn't anything we could do about it. So you're stuck in a place, you're looking up at the sky and you're like, why is it raining? Listen, if I could stop it, I would stop it, but I can't. And that's like circumstances that you can't control. Things are going to happen in your life that are far beyond your control. They come from a whole host of different sources, but there are things that happen in your life that you cannot control. And some of those things are very unpleasant. And that picture is part of the storm that finds you when something comes down pouring on your life. We even say when it rains, it pours. So even that metaphor means, yes, yeah, sometimes it gets rough. 
But then you have this, is storms come through events you can't control, but storms bring fears that you can't escape. Because Jesus said, after the rain fell, the floods came. Now, it's one thing to get rained upon at the beach. That's a bad day, but it's another thing where the floods came. While we were at the beach is when Hurricane Ida started moving through, right not too far from the location we were. And we packed up a day early and we came home because we recognized, okay, rain is bothersome, but floods are deadly. Floods are dangerous. And sometimes the pouring rain turns into a storm of flood in your life and it brings fears that you can't escape. That's what circumstances and troubles sometimes do to you and me in life. They, they provoke our fears. We get worried. We're in over our heads. The waters are rising and it feels like nothing can save us. That's what storms can bring about in us. So you've got the rain and you've got the floods and then you've got the, the winds blew, it says, and the winds blew. And it's all happening at once. And it's happening to the man whose house is on the rock and it's happening to his next door neighbor, the man whose house is on the sand. It's one storm that hits them both. The, the faithful guy doesn't get to avoid the storm and the unfaithful guy doesn't get to avoid the storm. The winds are blowing and this is like, it represents and it can represent problems that manifest that you didn't anticipate. And so here the winds are beating, pressure is coming and it's pushing you and it's roaring in you and it distracts you and it's just, it's overwhelming and it can move you off your mark if the wind is strong enough. It's that kind of problem that happens in life. So again, you've got the rain, you've got the floods, you've got the wind, but here's the main thing I wanted to get to. Jesus says all of the stuff beats on that house. It beats on the house you're building. It's coming against your life. It found you. You're having to deal with it. So the question is, who's going to survive the storm? Who's going to overcome? Who's going to experience victory? Who's going to be standing when the greatest storms that ever hit planet Earth are, are going to be released? You know, the Bible is very clear in the book of Revelation that at the end of the age will be the single worst seven year season that has ever hit planet Earth. It'll be the wrath of God being poured out. It will be the activity of Satan being rising up. It'll provoke the Antichrist who's going to operate in deception and viciousness and control everything. And there are going to be believers that are living during that time. And the question is, who are going to be the ones that endure until the end? Who are going to be the ones that overcome? Well, I'm going to tell you. It's those whose houses were built upon the rock. Those whose lives, they made up their mind before the storm came. They prepared for the storm. That's what this whole thing is. The whole thing Jesus is teaching is, I'm giving you this so that when the storms hit you, you'll be standing. And you have to say yes ahead of time. It's, it's, it's literally impossible to change your foundation in the middle of the storm. Your foundation is what it is. And so friends, you've got to think through this when it's beating on your house, when problems are beating on your life, when the enemy's coming hard against you, when it seems circumstances, physical, relational, financial, all of it, mental, spiritual, and it just feels like a constant barrage and a tempest coming against you. It's beating on you. But for you that have got your lives founded on Christ, you're going to make it. You're going to overcome. You're going to press through. The storm is going to pass, and when it does, guess who's going to be standing? You, because your life has been grounded upon Jesus Christ and what he has said, and you didn't waver, and you didn't quit, and you didn't despair. You just kept leaning on the rock. For those of you that have built on anything else, your riches, your looks, your popularity, your victimization, the feeling that you might be owed, Guys, can I say this? If you, if you live every day feeling like you got ripped off and somebody owes you, your life's not on the rock. You, you're not living your life built on the rock because Jesus doesn't impart a victim identity. The devil does. Jesus never does. If you think you're a victim and that's how you identify yourself, you're on sinking sand. You've got to recognize that, no, anybody that's been placed on the rock of Jesus Christ is an overcomer and one who is triumphant. And so those storms introduced reveal where we've built our house. So finally, wrapping up here, Jesus examines two potentials. The house of the wise man. Jesus says the house of the wise man during the storm did not fall because it had been founded 
on the rock. There it is. Jesus said, oh yeah, you listened to what I said. You believed what I said. You lived your life obeying what I said. And when the storm came, your life was so well grounded and your foundation was so sure that when the storm hit your life, and they will hit your life. Some of you are in a storm right now. It's going to hit your life, but you're going to overcome your house. Your life isn't going to crumble because you're grounded upon the rock. You've given Jesus everything. You're just going to keep trusting him. And listen, when all of the storms are finally over, the redeemed of the Lord will be standing in glory with the Lord who redeemed them. We will see the rock. We will be able to hear his voice and see his face and be able to rejoice in safety and security for all of time. But it's only for those who have said yes to him and not just with their lips, but with their lives. The other potential is, of course, negative. It's the tragic potential of the foolish person that built their house on the sand and it said their house fell. It fell and great was the fall of it. It wasn't a small thing. Everything was wrecked at the end. So let me just say this as I close. If you're watching today and you're surrendered to Jesus Christ, then I'm just going to empower you. I bless you in the name of Jesus to keep pressing through and the storm will end and you keep your eyes focused on the rock. You, you've come too far. You're not turning back. You just keep pressing in. Bless you in the name of Jesus with endurance, faithfulness, and trust the rock. You will overcome. For those of you that have never received Jesus or you're finding through this that you've said one thing about Jesus with your mouth, but your heart has never really been obedient and your life has never really conformed to him, I just want to warn you, we're getting close to the final storms and it's going to hit you and you're going to fall. And it's going to wreck you and it's going to ruin you and you will never overcome. You'll actually die because your life wasn't fixed on Jesus. It was fixed in the sand. You'll die and you'll, you'll depart. You'll, you'll go to the place where Jesus is not and you'll be there forever. So I'm going to encourage you right now, wherever you are, as we're closing the broadcast, get on your face and call Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life and surrender everything. And trust him with all of your heart and believe that he died on the cross for your sin. Believe that he rose again. Believe that he's defeated the greatest storm, which is the storm of death. And when you give your life to him, it's not superficial. It's not with your lips. It's with a life that says, I owe you everything. I trust you. And here is my life. Jesus, you are my all. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in to Truth Shots. We'll see you next time.